Why, hello folks. Uh, we're going to be doing something fun today. We're going to be doing a, a tier list. Yeah. Uh, just going over all of the uh, Tenet weapons released with the Sisters of Parvels update. Uh, I have played the game for long enough now that I have all of them. I have maxed all of them out. I've played around with all of them and I feel like I can sort of, you know, give, give my opinion on these weapons. Uh, basically to just give people... Uh, you know, sort of a, an idea about what to hunt for. If you haven't gotten everything yet, if you're just starting out and you sort of like want to know which weapons you should be looking for, which ones you should be prioritizing, stuff like that. Uh, so, I, so hopefully this guide can be uh, helpful to you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out some, some caveats for this, for just when demonstrating builds and stuff like that. Uh, number one, since these weapons go up to rank 40, if you put Forma in them, they start at rank 30, but every time you put a Forma into them, they go up another two ranks, so these can actually go up to rank 40, all of them. Uh, goes for the melee weapons as well. Um, this is for mastery purposes, you get in increased mastery all the way up to rank 40, which means that most people are probably going to be doing that. And it also helps a lot with different builds, because you have more mod capacity in these weapons than you do in normal weapons. Uh, for that reason... When I'm going over the builds, I'm going to assume that you have, in fact, put 5 Forma into it. So it has this increased mod capacity, and the builds are all going to be relying on that. Um, number 2, these weapons have innate um, elemental damage, which the, which innate uh, element it has. It's dependent on which Warframe you use to, uh, to spawn the Sister of Parvos. Um, and the, it takes a bit of a grind and a bit of a farm to get all of these. So I have a couple of them where, like, in hindsight, I'm not super happy about the element I picked for them. Uh, and I, I'm going to sort of recommend in that case that you actually go for something different from what I have. So, you know, take that into account when, uh, when I do my review and show off what they can or can't do. And finally, uh, I'm also going to throw out that, like, even though this tier list goes from, like, S all the way down to F. Just because I put something in the F tier here does not mean that it's a bad weapon. No, this is just sort of an internal ranking between them, which is which is the best or worst tenant weapon. But like even the worst tenant weapon is still better than most of the weapons in the game, right? Something that's F tier on this list is still going to outperform most non-tenant or non-Kuva weapons out there. So, so just keep that in mind. These are all great. These are all fantastic. Um, it's just that some of them are better than others. So we're going to start with the primaries, then move on to the secondaries, and finally the melee weapons. And there are four of each. Uh, so, so let's get started, shall we? So first up, we got this bad boy right here. It is the Tenet Archaplasmor. It is an, uh, an upgraded Tenet version of the old Archaplasmor that used to be a meta weapon back in the day, but has since sort of been left by the wayside since stronger things have, have arrived on the scene. So, so is, is the Archaplasmor back in the meta with, with, with the Tenet weapons? And yes, yes it is. Here, I'll, I'll show you. And I'm using the, um, the, the, um, the Arcanes that you get from Seal Path. Merciless, Deadhead, and Dexterity and all that jazz. So, uh, first of all, for this test, I'm going to have to rank this up to the maximum Arcane stack to show you the actual damage numbers. So, here we go. Okay, so let's spawn in some new of these level 185 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. They're a pretty good benchmark to use to test damage numbers. So, what can you do with this thing? Well... It's pretty good. You can you can you can take out some of the toughest enemies in the game with a, the click of a button. Uh, it, it's very strong. It's like a really really good shotgun, and um, it's got like almost twice the range of the classic Archaplasmor. So you can actually kill people from quite far away, and the spread is 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 quite decent. On, on these ranges as well. There's there's obviously fall off damage, but you know, hey, it's, it's still gonna do the trick. So it's very solid. Uh, so why is it so good? Well, it is because of the, the stats, obviously. Now this thing, I'm gonna recommend 
that you pick uh, for your innate element, uh, magnetic. And the reason for that is because the Archiplasmor already has innate radiation damage. That's what it does as its base damage type when you shoot with it. Uh, that means you can mod it for radiation plus magnetic plus viral plus single element. I chucked in the prime charge shell just for like just raw damage numbers. You can, if you want to go with heat, you can go with heat. That's fine as well. Um, and, um, and, and, and this is pretty good because this weapon actually has a very high uh, status chance as it is. Uh, now with the buff that they recently did to critical deceleration, uh, one of the corrupted mods for shotguns, uh, shotguns finally have a good crit chance mod, which they didn't have before. Uh, so that combined with prime ravage, you can actually do the crit numbers pretty high on shotguns nowadays. Uh, nowadays, you can use shotgun spaz to mitigate the lesser fire rate from critical deceleration. Um, so what you can do with this weapon actually is build it as a hybrid weapon, which is built for both crit chance and for status chance. Um, so it works very well with the galvanized savvy mod, which uh, increases damage by a lot based on just how many status effects you have uh, on your enemies. Uh, so this actually works pretty good with uh, all three of the galvanized mods that you get from arbitrations. Uh, obviously you want uh, projectile uh, speed because that increases the fall off and you can kill enemies from further away. Galvanized savvy because this is a status weapon. Galvanized hell is pretty much going to be put in every shotgun you have. Why wouldn't you use it? You, you're going to use it. Uh, so with this high uh, crit chance, it's also worth it to chuck in hunter munitions to get uh, slash procs. And I have a, a, a Riven mod for the Archiplasmor, uh, which I've just used for, you know, uh, getting, getting viral with a single mod. If you don't have that, uh, you'd probably have to, like, not use shotgun spas, and you'd have to use two mods instead. Uh, one for Toxin, one for Cold, the 60-60 mods, but that also gives you more status chance. Uh, it's just that your fire rate is gonna go down a bit, and with this weapon, I kind of like, uh, I kind of like having some quality of life mods in it, just to, to make it feel good to use. That is why normally, I recommend using, uh, Primary Deadhead for shotguns, actually, uh, because shotguns have such a nice spread when you shoot with them, so it's pretty much... Uh, always gonna headshot, so it's very easy uh, to get your uh, stacks for primary deadhead with a shotgun, and those stacks last for 24 seconds, which is nice. That being said, uh, the Archiplasmor does have a pretty slow reload speed, so unless you want to do like, I don't know, uh, use mods, something like prime tactical pump or something to ramp that up uh it an option is using the primary merciless mod instead because that does increase your reload speed and that's also another thing that's just going to make this weapon uh, feel nicer to use um so this is the build obviously it's you know it's pretty high level stuff you need here you need all three of the galvanized mods you know max rank primary merciless these however the the arcanes uh, the Merciless, Deadhead, Dexterity, all of that, they are basically free. Now, if you go to, like, the Warframe market, um, people farm them, but once you have your max rank mod, you don't actually, you know, have any other use for them, so they just sort of build up in your inventory, and they go for, like, one or two platinum or something. They, they're basically free. So getting a max rank primary Merciless, it's not going to cost you anything. And with that... If you have a max rank uh, arcane, you no longer need to use mods like point blank, serration, uh, stop, hornet strike, stuff like that, uh, because of the diminishing returns. This is the only thing you need to just ramp up your, your base damage. Uh, and that opens up mod slots and makes it easier to build. Um, so, so what I'm telling you here is going to be like sort of, you know, universal and it's going to apply to, to many of the different weapons. Uh, but this is the, the build I have for this Archiplasmor. Even without having my stacks ranked up, r ramped up at all. It doesn't take long when you start when you start shooting people. They go down. And when you have the combined bonus of the Galvanized Savvy, the Galvanized Head, and the Arcane. 
you can just one shot most things and reload speed feels a-okay so how good is the archaplasmor uh, where, where would i put this on the tier list as like the 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 opener so, so something of this power level and i'm gonna put the archaplasmor in the a tier this is an a tier weapon i'm not gonna put it on top uh, there are in fact other primaries as well that I that I put above it. It's very solid. The Archiplasmor is absolutely back in the meta, and it, it's it's a weapon that feels good to use. Um, but me personally, I actually don't think it's strongest one. It's just very very good. Next up, we have the the Tenet Envoy, one of the two uh, briefcase guns that they introduced with the Sisters of Parvos. The other one being the pistols, uh, the the Tenet Diplos. So. The Envoy, it's its a rocket launcher. That's what it is. It's got a cool mechanic here. I'm gonna have to uh, equip some sort of, of uh, pistol, whatever, just so I can show it off, uh, where it reloads while you have it holstered. So if I just fire off a bunch of them here, and then I switch to my pistol, yeah, this thing is actually just gonna be sitting there on your back and, and reloading itself, which is nice. Uh, because otherwise, if you do it manually, this thing has a slow reload speed. Very slow. And uh, that's also sort of, you know, already been bumped up a bit by my primary merciless, which has increased the reload speed. Otherwise, it would have been even slower. So, so you're supposed to, like, sort of, you know, weapon switching is encouraged. But if you don't want to do that, then then, you know... And that's that. That's an issue. Um, so let's look at the the damage output of this thing. I'm just gonna group everyone together, get my buffs, like always. So one sec. All right. So let's look at what this thing can do. And uh, well, it actually it actually is pretty good at killing things. And it's AoE, it's a big AoE, so it covers things in a very large area when you shoot. Um, that being said, this thing has a tracking mechanic. Look, if I shoot and then I hold down the aim button, I can guide the projectile, as you can see here. And you can actually guide it for quite a long time before, before you uh, get it to land. Works it when you're in the air as well. Now here's the problem. This is actually annoying. <laughs> this is actually annoying more so than it's helpful. Because, you know, when you play the game, kind of often you want to be sort of like just, you know, aim firing. And you're like, pew, and pew, and pew, and pew. And see, none of these rockets that I fired have actually hit the ground. Because since I kept up my aim, they were just sort of like just staying in the air and hovering around. So in order to fire this weapon efficiently, you kind of have to not be aiming. Um, because if you aim glide, then your rockets are not going to be hitting where you want them to hit. And aim gliding is actually a pretty p pretty big part of just, you know, normal gameplay. So, so it... It feels weird to say it, but I kind of wish that the weapon didn't have this mechanic of these homing missiles. It's cute, and it's a it's a cool gimmick, and all of that. That's nice, but but it's not helpful in normal gameplay. So it's it's very sort of like annoying and clunky to use in that way, and that's sort of the thing about the Tenet Envoy, uh, with the slow reload speed, and you can you can ramp it up by instead holstering it and letting it reload in the background, but that feels sort of clunky and annoying. And then you have this aim mechanic, which is a cool gimmick on paper, but in practice it feels clunky and annoying. So it's just a weapon that kind of feels bad to use. So I know it scores very high on like tier lists because most of those usually tend to only focus on damage numbers. But I also look at just quality of life and just how fun is this to use. It, is this an enjoyable weapon to use? And, and it's not. It, it's actually not. Um, anyway, another cool thing it does have going for it 
It's got innate cold damage on its rockets, which means that if you get one that has a toxin as its innate element, that means you are simply going to be firing viral rockets. Uh, don't even need anything else. Just, just fire viral rockets. And you can, like, just... I put in some, some extra viral damage so I can add heat as well. So you get the heat viral combo. That's nice if you want to. But there are a couple of different ways you can build it. Um... It's got good, good sort of like good enough crit crit stats where you kind of want to throw in hunter munitions, get those huge slash procs, do damage that way. Um, not enough, not enough status effects to really justify using galvanized aptitude, so I'm just skipping that one for this. Um, Prime firestorm is very nice just to increase the blast radius, obviously. Um, so, so the damage is there, but I don't enjoy using it at all. And for that reason, I'm going to put the Tenet Envoy in the D tier. That's right. That's right. This is this is a D tier weapon for being, you know, an Envoy weapon. There's still, it's still really, really good. It's just, you know. Next up, we have the Tenet Flux Rifle. It is the uh, upgraded version of the normal flux rifle, which has been in the game forever. The original uh, flux rifle was actually the first beam weapon introduced into the game. Um, they changed that for this one, so this is actually no longer a beam weapon. This is now a, just an automatic rifle. So it functions a bit differently. Uh, but you can still use uh, sort of like all the stuff you could use for it. Um, most notably, and this is very important for this weapon, uh, the Flux Overdrive mod, uh, which can give you like a massive, massive increase in your status chance. Um, but it seems to work a bit differently than it does when you equip it on the uh, uh, the beam version of the weapon, like the normal Flux rifle. So this one... It, it actually gives a way, way larger bump to your status chance uh, than it says right here. It, it says between 150 to 250 percent, but it's actually sort of closer to 400 percent, which means you end up at these like stupid numbers. Um, so, so that's really good. And when you build this weapon, like there are a couple of different ways you can go about it. Um, you can, because what you want to do with this weapon is you want to stack a million billion slash procs. So you can do it with like hunter munitions. You can do it the way I did it, which is just uh, making slash the prioritized status chance. For people who don't know, if a weapon does a bunch of different status effects, then priority is given based on uh, how much damage you do of each corresponding type. In this case, about 60% of the damage output comes from slash which means uh, about 60% of the uh, uh, status procs that hit enemies are going to be slash procs, which is what I want. So if you're wondering why I'm using an unranked Rhyme Round mod here, it's actually on purpose. Um, so, so it's a bit weird to explain this, because like here, as you can see here, um, I have innate toxin damage. So toxin plus cold together means viral. And for the Flux Rifle, you kind of want this number to be sort of as low as possible. The reason for that is because there's a limit to how many viral procs you can stack on an enemy that caps out at 10. So there's no point in putting more than 10 status procs on an enemy. So I, I kind of want the, the viral damage to be as low as possible and the slash damage to be as high as possible. So... I'm I'm increasing the slash damage this way. I'm using this instead of instead of um, uh, hunter munitions. You can go with hunter munitions as well as, as an option to just increase the amount of uh, slash procs you do. Um, but but that's why like no, I don't want a bunch of viral damage. I want that low. I just want this to exist because with the, the fire rate of this thing and the status chance of this thing, it's only going to take like a, a millisecond to put 10 sla uh, viral procs on an enemy. And then I want all the other procs to be slash procs. And I'm going to show you what this is going to do um, in practice. So first up, as always, I got to ramp up my uh, galvanized stuff and my arcanes to the max rank so I can show you the actual damage numbers. All right, galvanized chamber is up, and my uh, uh, primary merciless is up. So now, if I go up and shoot a guy like this, 
as you can see, they have their 10 viral procs in them and 35 slash procs. 38 slash procs in a millisecond here. And slash is damage over time slash procs and they completely ignore armor. So, as you can see, I just need to eh. And then, you know, the slash procs do the rest of the work and that's kind of how you want the damage to work. If you do headshots, it's obviously even better. So, so it, the damage is actually quite insane with this. Um, to the point where I'm gonna say that, like, against anything that doesn't have sort of status immunity, this is one of the strongest single target damage weapons in the entire game. Now, obvious drawback of this is trying to fight against stuff like Sisters of Powerballs, uh, or, or Acolytes, stuff like that, because they have caps on how many status effects you can put on them. It's like cap at four. So, with, with this thing, you know, only being allowed to put four status, like slash procs on, on an enemy, means you won't do a whole lot of damage, because look at this. That's 69 slash procs. That's sort of where you want to go with this, and that's what you're going to get in practice. So if you can't do that, then the, the, the gun won't do what it's supposed to do. But if you can do that... Then, then this thing shreds. It absolutely shreds. It's quite strong. So if you are one of the people who, who just likes single target weapons rather than DPS weapons, uh, this, this is really fun. It's really fun and it's really good. Um, as for the build, you absolutely want to increase the fire rate and you want punch through. Um, with, uh, these, with this fire rate, a crit chance of 50% is more than good enough to just consistently crit left and right. So you want your point strike and your vital sense in there. Um, you want to increase damage based on, you know, status procs on enemies because you're going to be delivering a lot of status procs to enemies. Galvanized chamber goes on everything. Uh, flux overdrive is needed if, to actually really, really get this good. And then you can either do stuff like um, you, uh, hunting munitions. That's one way of ramping up slash procs with the crits. Um, I prefer to just increase the slash damage to just get my slash procs that way. Um, and that's about it. That's about it for the build. So, since this is a kind of a unique weapon and it, it and it has these sort of, you know, it fills a niche. Um, and it's fun and it's different. And, you know, everything combined with the power level as well. I'm gonna put uh, this little bad boy uh, in, in the B tier. Yeah, it's it's actually not it's actually not bad at all. It's pretty good. So if you have slept on it, you just go give that one a, a try. See see how you like it. And finally, uh, in the primary weapon category, we've got the Tenet Tetra. So this weapon actually already got a nerf because when when it came out, it didn't have a fall off on its damage, <laughs> which. I was a bit sad to see it get nerfed. I didn't think it was warranted, um, but it, it did. So, it, and ever since that happened, I think people have sort of like drifted away from this weapon and just assumed that it's not good any longer because of that, because they introduced like damage fall off. So, so let's, let's find out, shall we? So unlike the normal Tetra, the normal Tetra, it's like this, right? like just an, an, an semi-automatic rifle or whatever but the tender tetra has an alt fire semi where you fire the entire magazine of all 80 shots as a grenade and it explodes yeah so is that good well let's find out i have not stacked my uh my my buffs from the galvanized mods and from my arcanes, so this is just a normal, un, you know, base damage. And let's let's see what this thing does. Hmm. All right. Not bad. So even unbuffed, like, it, it can kill things, but it's gonna take a bit of a while. But now that we have all our stacks... Let me just plop up some more enemies. Whee! 
I just bonk. Maybe a second bonk. And that's it. Yeah. They, everything dies. Goddamn. Oh, you survived. Rude. So, the thing about this is that, like, even with the fall-off, the, the fall-off isn't that bad. It's, it's, it, it can still kill people from, from quite far away. If I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull everything together here. So we don't have to deal with that. And, and, and it's just... This thing is a powerhouse! Look at this damage! It's insane! So, you, you never ever want to use like the normal fire for this. This one is all about the alt fire. And this alt fire, even with the nerf, it is so strong. It can wipe out such high level enemies with ease. In practice, like, it, it just wipes an entire room. You fire in a grenade and everything inside the room kind of dies. Which is nice. Except for this guy for some reason because I just couldn't get a hit in. So let's look at the build for this little thing. Uh, first up for the element, it's classic. You just want your normal sort of heat viral build. Uh, which means heat should be the innate element. And uh, yeah, that's, that's good enough. And... It's got IPS, Impact Puncture Slash, so IPS plus Heat Virals, a lot of different status effects, and a very high status chance as it is. So, it's got both good crit chance and good status chance, which means you want uh, uh, Galvanized Aptitude in there, and you want uh, Hunter Munitions as well, because you crit a lot and you do these big slash procs and you do big damage. Critical Delay is juicy for this weapon, because... If you're only gonna fire the entire magazine in one shot and then reload, then you don't care anything about fire rate. Um, it's it's fine. So it's just a big, big crit bonus, which is nice. And I'm just putting in primed cryo rounds together with Malignant Force for just ramping up the base damage. And uh, eh, I'm just chuck a primary merciless in there as well. And if you have primary merciless, you don't need serration. And that opens up a mod slot for Prime Firestorm to increase the blast radius um, to, you know, sort of mitigate the fact that it now has fall-off damage. <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. So, I said before that, like, the only thing that holds this weapon back in practice is its ammo economy. That is correct. Um, the ammo economy is still an issue for this weapon. It's a big issue, so if you run this... Uh, you pretty much have to use Vigilante Supplies um, or uh, Rifle Ammo Mutation if you have that. Otherwise, you are constantly, constantly going to run out of ammo for this thing. So, so those are absolutely necessary. Maybe you can run a carrier with ammo case or something. I don't know if that's good enough. Um, but if you can fix the ammo issues, then um, what you're looking at here is actually... I'm gonna say, still, one of the absolute best AoE weapons in the entire game. Uh, the damage output is stupid. It still covers massive, massive areas. Uh, feels good to use, really, really strong. Um, if you can manage the ammo, that's it. So, like, there are very few weapons in the game that can just consistently do this um, with so little effort. Doesn't matter which Warframe you use, doesn't matter which ability you set up, doesn't matter your build or whatever. Uh, you can just run around with this and clear anything except for sort of like long endurance runs or whatever. Every, any sort of normal star chart mission and steel path as well. Uh, and you're just gonna melt things. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say that despite the nerf, this is still the best Tenet primary weapon. And I'm going to put the Tenet Tetra firmly, firmly in the S tier, where it belongs. If people are sleeping on it, stop doing that, because this is a powerhouse. This is an amazing weapon. And with that, it is time to move on to the, to the secondaries. So this nasty little guy right here is the Tenet Cycron. 
we're gonna start with that one. Uh, it is a beam uh, weapon, as you can see here. If you look at the bottom right, it has infinite ammo. It just recharges itself after a while. Yep, that's what it does. And it, uh, it chains between enemies. Does that sound familiar to you compared to some other secondary weapons? Maybe it should. So, as you can see, it chains in about the same way as a Kuva Nukor. That is the obvious comparison. Uh, the difference being, Kuva Nukor is better for spreading uh, status effects, even after its nerf. Than this thing is the Kuva Nukor. It also has the innate um, microwave thingy that actually counts as its own status effect for the sake of uh, condition overload and stuff like that. But this thing actually has a stronger uh, raw damage output than the Kuva Nukor does. So, so as you can see, it is. A great little tool uh, for just killing things. For just running around and straight up melting things. Uh, if we shoot at an enemy from above, like this, you can see how it spreads. There's a limit of like two or three things it can spread to at the same time. Doesn't matter. Things go down pretty quickly. And if you look at status effects on this thing, what do we got? 38 heat procs. And then you got some corrosive and, and radiation in there as well, yeah. So this is actually quite efficient at spreading status too, just like the Kuva Nukor is. Whee! They're very similar to each other. So let's check the, uh, the build I'm using. Uh, first of all, when it comes to the uh, innate element, what you want with this one. Uh, is radiation um, because that means you can get the sweet little heat plus radiation plus corrosive thing that I've got going on right here and the reason why I'm doing this is because this uh, weapon actually has has innate heat damage so like just without its bonus element it's just it, it does heat damage and uh, if you want to this is sort of a matter of preference you can replace this here jolt with a frostbite and then you'll instead get like heat plus radiation plus viral. Normally when I play the game I use sort of like a Panzer Valpophila instead to spread my viral stacks. But you can use this weapon uh, for this too. So you can do heat radiation viral if you don't want to do heat radiation corrosive. Um, eh. You're probably going to get like a sort of similar output in performance with Viral. The issue being, of course, that, you know, there's a limit to how much you can stack Viral. It, uh, it stops at 10 stacks. After that, you can't get more Viral stacks on enemies. But if you don't have any other way of spreading Viral, then it's a good way to sort of just ramp up the damage. So I guess it sort of just comes down to preference, right? If you have a Panzer Valpophila that you run with, then, you know, hey, stack Corrosive on here instead. If you don't have a Panzer Valpophila, use it to spread viral sacks and then it's gonna melt everything. So how strong is this weapon? It's, oh, it's super strong. It's super strong. Like, it is, it is up there with the Kuva Nukor. It's, it's so comparable in just how it functions and what it does. So, um... I'm gonna put it at, at roughly, roughly sort of the same power level and probably meta relevance as well. So the Cycron just goes straight up, straight into the S tier. Into into the S tier it goes. It is the best secondary that you can get uh, from the Tenet secondaries, uh, and it's pretty much not even close. So so if you don't have it yet? Go get it. God damn, go get it. It's really good. Next up are the Tenet Diplos, the second uh, briefcase gun after the Tenet Envoy. They have the same reload mechanic, which means they reload when they're holstered. Um, which is nice, I guess. Otherwise, they're a machine pistol. And... Yeah, it's, it's an okay reload speed. It's not, it's not anything sort of like spectacular or anything. But, but yeah, that's something you can do if you want to. 
And they have a sort of special mechanic, which is when you, if you aim with with them, you can get like a reticule over over all a bunch of enemies. And then if you shoot, you're gonna get these little homing shots. Now, unfortunately, this could be so cool if you could go like full auto, but you can't. See, I just held down the button, but it only shot that little burst. And what it is is two shots per enemy. Uh, how good is that in practice? It's not. It's not. It does almost no damage at all when it's like these just little bit, 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 bit. It's like nothing. And the problem is, if you aim an enemy and you like hold down the fire button, then I'm I'm holding down the fire button right now, but it's not shooting because like it's just reloading the thing, and then I have to shoot two little bursts again and then two little bursts again. So it actually just prevents me from auto firing the weapon. Which is garbage. It's hot ass. The only way to get around this is to like aim to the side of the enemy and start shooting and then track your gun like to the enemy. Then I can aim fire without having this stupid mechanic in, in the way. I could also start firing like this and then hold down the aim button. Same way. Uh, but if I just hold on to an enemy like this, this is... It's gonna feel like this. I'm trying to fire the auto. I'm trying to fire my automatic weapon. And it's not working. I'm only firing two bullets at a time. And it, and it's, it sucks. It, it sucks. It feels really bad to use this mechanic. And like with the Envoy and the homing mechanism, which is a cool gimmick, but you wish the weapon didn't have it. Same thing here. Cool gimmick... Wish it didn't do this. If I could just hold down the fire button while while I was locked on like this. If I was locked on now and I could just hold down and just empty the entire magazine and it would just keep on firing, that would be great. But limiting it to like two shots, like one per gun, per enemy, it just means this mechanic becomes completely, completely useless. Like absolute ass. So you have to work around it. You have to like try to make it not do the thing. Alright, with that out of the way, is the weapon good? Well, let's look at the damage output. Alright, we got all our stacks up, and this is what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, like... It, it, is, it is killing things just fine. Just fine. For being like a machine pistol, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the damage output. Quite strong in that regard. If you look at the build I have, um, I've got one that has like heat damage as the innate element. Um, it doesn't have a good sort of like slash weight from the start. It doesn't have like a good uh, status chance from the start. It's got very good, if you look at like the base stats, it's got very good like base crit chance. So it's very natural to gravitate towards building it for crits and just being a crit weapon. So you want your prime pistol gambit in there, you want your prime target cracker, and then you just sort of want to like just ramp up, ramp up your damage. So it's a very basic sort of crit build. And it works. It works that way. Um, it's it's a it's a good crit weapon. It's a good sort of like a crit machine gun, machine pistol. But I hate <laughs> I hate the extra mechanic with this aim thing. This I wish it didn't do this because it ruins the weapon. It makes it really really unfun to use because you're fighting against the weapon every single second while you're using it. Um, it just does. It's not fun. Damn. Um, so I'm actually I'm actually gonna put this weapon at the very bottom. I'm putting this in the F tier. It's it's it like it's good at killing things. It's a strong weapon, but I hate it. <laughs> it's not fun to use, and I'm not gonna recommend anyone else to to get it either until they sort of like do something about this mechanic. Um, 
it's been out for a couple of months already. It's it's similar to sort of like the the Sepulchrum, one of the uh, Deimos weapons that sort of functions the same way. Same complaints that people have about that one too, where it's like it's just clunky. It's a cool idea, in, like in theory, it's a cool gimmick, but the execution in practice ma makes for a gun that simply isn't fun to use. So it needs to be reworked. If they can rework this the mechanic to actually make it fun to use, then these are going to shoot straight up on the list because the damage output is absolutely there. Um, but as it is, I, I'm not going to recommend anyone to get these. Sorry to say. Ugh. Moving on. Next up, we have one of the new unique weapons, the Tenet Spyrex, which is a... Uh, it's kind of like a single target, single shot weapon, like... Like this. Uh, but it actually has a small, small AoE effect. Very small. It's like one meter or so. So if you shoot very close to someone, it's actually going to hit them. So it, it's not super reliable. I've seen some builds where you sort of like try to increase the blast radius on this thing, but it's not, it's not uh, super viable to do that. So how strong is this little bad boy? Let's see what we can do with this guy. All right, we got our galvanized stacks. We got our arcanes up. And if we shoot someone... Yeah, they die. Uh-huh. No issues here. Don't even need headshots. Shoot them in the belly. And they will die. Yep. Shoot them in the face, they die even faster. So... Very, very strong single target damage. But that's about it. The AoE uh, is, is not particularly reliable. It's not going to do like a, a ton of damage either. Um, so you kind of want to aim and just hit enemies one by one with this. Um, what's interesting about this weapon and what sort of makes it work is this is one of the weapons where you can use the hemorrhage mod that you can get from from playing like arcwing i mean railjack missions doing all the bonus objectives you can get this like as a bonus uh, mission reward in the end um it is a mod that lets you uh make impact status procs better because they will also deliver slash procs and that's how you kill everything <laughs> because that's that's the meta in the end game people it's slash so Usually what you're looking for, uh, if you want weapons where this mod is going to be efficient, uh, you want weapons, it's not that they have like impact damage or whatnot, it's that they have guaranteed impact procs. That's kind of what you want, because then you don't have to worry about stacking a bunch of impact damage to give that one priority or whatever. You can just stack whatever damage type you want. Um, and the Spyrex is one of those weapons that does that. It has guaranteed impact procs on its on its direct hits. So it also has a low enough fire rate under 2.5 where this has a 70% chance to give you slash procs instead of 35, which is what you really want for this mod to shine. Um, so that's basically how you get these stupid damage numbers. Otherwise, it's a decent crit chance, very good status chance. So you just you build it as a hybrid weapon. You do your standard heat corrosive or heat viral or whatnot, and 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 then you just you just use hemorrhage. That's it. You just use hemorrhage, and uh, you get your you get your guaranteed impact procs. So if you fire this one on an enemy, then we'll just look at. Eh. Uh, I'm gonna have to aim for the body. They die too fast if I shoot them in the head. Here. Uh. No, not on that one, but it's not a guarantee. There's only 70% chance. Oh, there we get. We got a slash proc. Yeah, three slash procs. There. And that's enough to kill them. Four slash procs, so that guy's gonna die. Yep. And that's where the damage output of this weapon comes from. Straight up. Um, and it works. It works, but it is kind of slow, it's kind of clunky, it's single target, and uh, 
the AOE is like nothing to write home about. And and it's hard to sort of justify putting this into any build. Uh, there there are better options for secondaries. I kind of don't see when you would ever have the op the reason to use this over a couple of other things. Which means that unfortunately, I'm going to be putting these Pyrex in the E tier. It's not the worst. <laughs> that's that's the Diplos, but it's not. Uh, it's not something that you're gonna... You're not missing out on much if you don't pick this weapon up. There are other cooler, more interesting weapons in this arsenal. So let's move on, shall we? And for the last of the secondary weapons, we got the Tenet Detron. This is the uh, upgraded version of the Detron. We already have one upgraded version of the Detron called the Mara Detron. Uh, the Tenet Detron is another upgrade. Uh, once upon a time, the Detron was part of the meta many, many years ago. Uh, no more. However, uh, with this upgraded version, it can do some new stuff that it couldn't do before. Ooh. So, normally the Detron, it's like a, a hand cannon, sort of like a hand shotgun thing. Fires in a spread. Uh, very big multi-shot. Uh... The Tenet Detron also has an alt fire, where you fire the entire magazine in one go. I'm just covering sort of like a a carpet of bullets on an enemy. So, as you can see, you, you, you stack so many status effects on them with this. So many. And I haven't even gotten my stacks up yet, so let's let's do that. So with all our stacks, it's like the damage is quite nice. And with the, the spread of this thing, it's actually quite easy to, uh, to hit a bunch of enemies at the same time. Um, obviously you want sort of like a focused fire and, you know, hit an enemy with, with a lot of shots uh, to really like take out these high level targets. But for low level stuff, you can just a point into a mass of enemies and just do something like this. And it's gonna it's gonna actually wipe most things. You're pretty much never gonna want to use the normal fire like this because I don't know. This doesn't have the same oomph to it as this. So if we stand a bit further away so we can actually No, they die too quickly. I wanna see how many <laughs> sort of status effects. Yeah, eleven heat procs, eight viral procs, five radiation proc procs, three magnetic procs. So it's it's a fantastic Fantastic way of like just uh, priming for status effects or just doing damage. It can it can sort of serve as both. Um, now that being said, it doesn't excel in in the same way that like other uh, secondary weapons do. It's good, feels good to use. Um, but I wouldn't put it like sort of like up the uh, top of the line compared to a bunch of other stuff. If you look at the the build I'm using, I'm running with magnetic as the innate element, and that is because uh, this little bad boy right here, it does radiation damage as the default. So you can actually put in uh, toxin plus cold plus heat. Which means you can get the nice heat plus radiation plus magnetic plus viral combo, which is rad. With a primed heated charge, you also get priority on heat, so you're not stacking mostly heat procs on enemies, which is also nice. That's pretty much the one you want to be stacking the most for the damage over time effect. And uh, since you empty the entire magazine with the alt fire, I prefer Ice Storm over the 60-60... Uh, uh, status and uh, and uh, cold damage mod because uh, this increases the magazine size from six to eight Which actually represents a sizable DPS increase um, I would prefer that over just increasing the status just a little bit more uh, Status per projectile is a bit deceiving because this thing has 27 multi-shot with the lethal torrent mod and the um, galvanized diffusion. So every shot is 27 shots. So 24% status per projectile means you're going to be stacking a lot of status effects on enemies. 
It doesn't have a super high base crit chance, at 18% is quite low. Um, but with Pistol Gambit and Target Cracker, uh, a crit chance of 51% is still pretty nice together with this massive amount of multi shot so you're still going to be doing like a lot of crits. An important thing for this one is actually that it has a massive recoil. So you pretty much you pretty much have to run steady hands in the XLA slot or otherwise you're just going to be flailing in every direction when you fire that alt fire. Um I I can't really like I know it it feels tempting to put in lethal momentum to just increase like the fall off and stuff, but you you got to have steady hands on this thing. Pretty much have to. Uh, so that's the build. It's a cool weapon. Yeah, it's not the best, but it's absolutely not the worst. It's very solid. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one in the in the C tier. And with that, we are done with the secondaries, and let's let's move on to the melees. All right. So first up, you know, as as a caveat here, uh, farming for these guys, the tenant melee weapons, is a bit arduous because you need corrupted hollow keys to get them. Uh, used to be that you could only get them f as a reward for running void storm missions uh, you now also get them for defeating sisters of parvos getting them that way and it's 40 a pop from uh, uh from ergo glass to buy these four different weapons uh they come with random elements every week and random uh, numbers on the bonus so it's going to take you a while to find exactly what you want i have one of each but i haven't like gotten the optimized ideal versions of them yet so for example for this tenet gregory here i have a very high number of like magnetic damage which is not ideal but it's it's what he had it's, it's, it's don't worry about it um this thing is a bit special in that it has a if you do your heavy attack while you slide boom, you throw away a disc um, that ricochets and bounces around and does a bunch of different damage and how long this ricochet or like how long this disc flies around is dependent on your combo counter so if you're at like 12 combo then this thing is gonna fly around and bounce around for a long time but if you use a heavy attack then you lose all of your combo so you know how do you get that to sort of work uh, because the disc is strong trust me if, if you build around it it's very strong and the reason uh, this works and how you get it to work is you kind of need two mods for that you need the mod called um, swift momentum the reason for that is because we need to increase our combo duration you get this from arbitrations you just run arbitrations and you know, it's one of the later rewards it's gonna take a while but eventually you you're hopefully gonna get it but this plus six uh, second combo duration is very important because we have to run the Zenric school normally when you want to maintain combo you want to be in the naramon focus school and you want to use power spike uh to make sure that your combo doesn't sort of like deplete but we can't do that you have to run Zenric, and the reason for that is because we have to run inner might which increases heavy attack efficiency. What heavy attack efficiency means is how much combo do you lose when you use a heavy attack. So heavy attack efficiency, 60% from inner might. And then we also have a mod called reflex coil, which is also another 60% heavy attack efficiency. They stack together, giving you a total of 90% heavy attack efficiency. So instead of losing all of your combo when you use a heavy attack instead you will only lose 10 percent of your combo when you use a heavy attack uh, this means you can stay on like 10 11 12 combo something like that and and chuck the disc without losing your combo so you can just use that as part of your gameplay loop uh, also important to note is that the slide and heavy attack is not the only way to send this disc it's also a part of the normal two attack combo uh, with you know this stands mod so if you just do one attack and then another you throw that disc that way as well so let's look at how good this disc is uh, once we have stacked our combo so well, let's do that now let's go and, and stack our combo and it's not gonna take long uh, with the, you know with um, there we're at 12 combo. It, it, it's so easy with a scythe like this. 
And it's 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 a, an extremely good slash weapon as it is. So uh, just killing enemies with your slash procs is usually not going to be that hard. But we know that. We know that we we know that um, melee weapons are good. Ah, but let's look. Uh, let's look at the disc because that's sort of like you know, the fun part about this thing. Okay, there we go. And now, woo! Yeah, let's try the sliding version. Woo! And then they pretty much, uh, pretty much died. Let's spawn in some more. Check the range. Woo! Range is pretty good. Can hit people from pretty far away. Feels a bit sort of like an uh, an archaeplasm in, in the range. So, eh. You just throw it, throw it through a bunch of enemies and they die. And normally you can just, you know, sort of just do your do your do your heavy swings. And you'll be firing these discs back and forth, bounce around, and. And they pretty much kill whatever they pass through. It's cool. So you can do some stuff with this. You can do some stuff with this. Uh, it, it's quite strong. As for the rest of the build I have, the nice thing about these uh, tenant weapons is as a rank 40 melee weapon, modding is a breeze. You have so much mod capacity when it's rank 40 and you just have your stands mod in. Look, I have two sacrificial mods with the wrong sort of mod slots in for them. And it's fine and I'm still like not even close to capacity. So you can just build these whichever way you like. Uh, which also just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a plus for all of the tenant weapons. As far as comparing them to other melee weapons. Uh, since we are uh, running... At high combo at all times, we do want Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds to uh, to just increase our damage. Uh, because hey, man, still even with the even with the nerfs, they still do quite a lot. Uh, running Sacrificial Steel and Sacrificial Pressure just to ramp up the the base damage, which is fine. Um, and you want it to be weighted towards slash, so you're mostly doing slash damage, uh, because that just that just makes the weapon stronger, and uh, hence why I just have the this Carnis mod in as well, just to increase the weight of uh, slash damage, and and that's pretty much the build. It, it's you know just some pretty basic stuff. After the nerf to Berserker Fury, uh, sometimes I just prefer to run Prime Fury instead. Just for the upfront attack speed that I don't have to worry about getting kills and stuff like that. And what's really important to note about these weapons is that two of these uh, tenant weapons, the Grigori and and uh, another one, the Livia, uh, they have this, uh, this, this attaché system, uh, which means that they, uh, they keep their combo timer intact while you holster the weapon, which is also very good since you're not running Naramon. Um, that means... It kind of works uh, like the Zoris with its infinite time combo duration, except that it's only infinite while you're not ha having the the weapon out. So I'll show you. I'll just gonna I'm just gonna pull these guys together here, and and let's just put ourselves at at 12 combo. And there we're at 12 combo. So now if I just if I just switch here to uh, to my Archiplasmor. You can look at those two numbers in the top right of the screen that says times 11 for my blood rush and for my weeping wounds. And as you can see, they are not depleting. Uh, my combo is not uh, being affected. I'm, I'm just staying at 12 combo forever. As long as I want to. And I can just go around shooting enemies. And uh, when I have an opportunity to where I need to pull out my melee, then... Whoop, and I still got my 12 combo. See, it's still there. Which is very nice. 
Uh, that makes these uh, weapons pretty ideal for stuff like disruption missions, uh, because there could be some some time, maybe like a minute or so between demo lists, and you don't even have to pay attention to your combo counter in the meantime. Just use your guns to kill normal enemies, and then you can just pull out your melees when it's time to take out uh, the demo list. So, you know, that's nice. So you got that, and you got this actually... Actually quite good, quite good, this little uh, throwy disc here that does a lot of damage. Um, so so this is this is a pretty strong melee weapon and it kind of competes with with uh, some of the best stuff out there. So I'm, I'm gonna say that this weapon should go firmly, firmly in the A-class. That's right. Next up we have the Tenet Agendas, the uh, hammer and and shield combo, which is nice. Um, just from looking at the the stats, it doesn't maybe seem uh, that impressive. I don't know. I don't know because it's like it's got not the highest sort of crit chance stuff and status chance is decent and all of that. And it does mostly uh, impact damage. So it does impact damage, and um, it also has uh, innate electricity damage which means that uh you can mod it for different things depending on like which um uh which progenitor sort of like element it has i managed to get one with toxin uh, which means that it actually in that case gets innate uh, corrosive damage you can go for like toxin electricity heat and build a couple of different things uh, so a build i'm going for here uh, is ramping up the damage and just going with a heat and corrosive combo in this case i would have preferred to have it a bit different i would prefer to have like more heat damage so i'm stacking like more heat procs and stuff when i when i attack um but why i'm building sort of for blood rush and weeping wounds for this one is just like with the, the um uh the the tenet grigori which we just showed the scythe this one also has uh, an interesting little side effect, and that is you can launch a disc with the heavy attack, which is the first one in the series. So if you just do a heavy attack, you fire away, you, you fire a disc. Woo! Like so. So if you like spam it, it doesn't do it on like the second attack, that's the hammer swing instead. So you just sort of shoot the shield, like so. And is that good? Uh, yeah, that's it's, it's pretty good. So if you don't have like anything at all on this and just fire the disc, then it's like, hey, you see that? That, that damage is, it's decent, right? Even without any th sort of like charge on it, it actually got pretty solid damage. So uh, this also scales with combo. So just like with the Grigori, we want combo efficiency. Uh, we do want increased combo duration from Swift Momentum. We want the Zenric School and we want Inner Might for more heavy attack efficiency. I am also running a uh, Focus Energy mod for even more heavy attack efficiency, some more electricity damage. That way we can maintain uh, a, a 12 combo and still fire away these discs. So let's, let's, let's check that out. So we want to build up our combo. And the damage is actually quite nice as it is. This is just like wailing away with a normal sort of like just blood rush and uh, weeping wounds build. But now let's have a look at this disc, shall we? So first, don't, ah, don't lose the combo. And alley-oop. And let's just fire one. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, this thing is pretty good. This thing is pretty good. Um, do not sleep on these energy discs that you fire away with your heavy attack. Uh, what's important to notice about this weapon is that it does not have the attaché thing. Uh, that the Grigori has. So as you can see now, I lost my combo. Uh, that is why you absolutely need to have swift momentum, so you can keep your combo duration up uh, for longer. Those extra six seconds helps. But then, 
you can just fire your shield like this. And it will take out very, very high level stuff. Extremely high level stuff. Like this, this uh, disc attack that you throw away with this thing. It's so strong that this actually puts the Tenet Agendas like above all the other Tenet weapons. Um, it is ridiculously strong. Ridiculously strong. Um, and it's very unique to the Tenet Agendas. So, uh, for this mechanic alone, uh, I, you know what, I'm gonna put the Tenet Agendas up in the S tier. That's right, this is the, the best of the melee weapons uh, that you can get from, from Ergo Glast. So, 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 yeah. Hammer and Shield. Isn't that cool? You should, you should try it sometime, because why not run around with the Hammer and Shield? It's rad. Next up is the Tenet Exec, the Heavy Blade. Uh, it looks cool. It looks cool as rad. Uh, this one has a special thing, like all the, the Tenet weapons do, mostly. And um, it is with slam attacks. You fire off a little, little explodey thing in front of you here. And with a heavy slam attack, explodey in every direction. And what this does is it does damage and it ragdolls enemies, so they, you send them flying. So, does it do good damage? Well, as you can see, it really ragdolls enemies, but as you can also see, no. They took, like, zero damage from this. Like, practically no damage at all. And unfortunately, that's gonna be the case for this thing. The damage numbers are simply not there for this, for this effect. The, I've seen some videos of people like really building everything around the slam attack and you combine it with with like just <clears throat> some frames that can stack damage like Saren and her toxic lash and then you add Bane mods to it as well and then you add some other stuff to it as well. Just stack damage upon damage upon damage upon damage to make the slam attack work and yeah sure you can make it work that way in like one specific meme build. Uh, but for for your average sort of gameplay with any frame, that's not gonna work. And for most frames who are gonna try this, this is just not gonna do any damage. Um, that being said, I don't actually mind uh, the ragdoll effect, even though it sends people flying in sort of obnoxious ways. It's a pretty good crowd control tool um, to just ragdoll enemies left and right. So. What, something with this weapon that I feel people are sleeping on a little bit um, is the fact that, you know, depending on which heavy blade um, moves that you use, uh, you can incorporate this. Because the Tenet, uh, I mean, the, the Tempo Royale um, stance mod, actually, if you just do your hold down the right mouse button and do the combo, you see here, you do, you just do slams. That's just part of the normal... Uh, the, the normal gameplay. Another one is if you do hold forward while aiming and doing your combo. Again, you do a slam as part of the combo, and that is going to generate these uh, these shockwaves as well. So you can just build combo the normal way and attack enemies the normal way, and at the same time, uh, you can just ragdoll stuff around you. And that is pretty much what I think the mechanic should be used for. You shouldn't build this to, to do some sort of weird sort of damage stuff with the shockwave. I don't think that's what it's good for. Just use them as a crowd control tool. Just use them to ragdoll enemies left and right. Uh, and just use it as a heavy blade uh, otherwise. Just a normal heavy blade. As for the weapon itself, it has good stats. It's weighted somewhat toward impact. It's also got slash. You can build it uh, to just increase your slash damage and, and weight it toward that. Um, so that you can like just do your slash procs and kill your enemies that way. And other than that, just use a standard condition overload build. And don't think all that much about the, the extra mechanic and just use it as a crowd control tool. And in, in that regard, it's fine. It's a fine 
melee weapon. It's not a standout melee weapon. It doesn't do anything super cool. It does have this, which is rad, uh, but it's not earth shattering. It's not mind blowing. So I'm going to put the tenant exec in the C tier and that's pretty much where it belongs. It's, it's, it's middle of the road. It's decent, but, uh, but nothing special. And lastly, we have the Tenet Livia, which is the two-handed Nikana. Um, this one doesn't really have anything super special. It has a thing where blocked hits have a chance to increase the, the, the blocking angle. Yeah, sure, sure, okay, whatever. It's, it's not anything you're really going to be paying attention to. Uh, and other than that, it has the Atache uh, rules in place, which means that you can keep your combo counter alive uh, forever by just holstering the weapon. Now, other than that, what's neat about this one, since it doesn't really have anything special going for it, is it's got really, really good base stats. It's like really solid. Um, it's almost entirely... Uh, it's an IPS weapon, but it's heavily weighted towards slash, so it's very easy to stack slash procs on it. Uh, it's got pretty good status chance. It's got pretty good crit chance. It's got pretty good follow through. Um, it's got pretty good attack speed. It's like pretty good everything, all the stats around. I think it's like almost identical in stats to like the Nikana Prime. Um, but this is a two-handed Nikana. So that's nice. Stat-wise, it's like the best two-handed Nikana in the game. And and you and you can get your slash procs in and you can you can you can kill stuff to your heart's content. Now the problem with this weapon, the real problem with this weapon, unfortunately. Is and, and this is pretty much consensus, I guess, at this point among Warframe players, is that the stance for it sucks. It's got a stance mod called Wise Razor. That is the stance mod for two-handed Nikanas. And the, the normal combo, it's very slow. We have to go through these choppy chops in, before you start like doing your big slashes. And pretty much no matter uh, which sort of uh, combo you choose to use. Ah, it feels very slow, it feels very choppy, it feels very clunky. Uh, like, to the point that I know a lot of players, uh, when they use, like, a two-handed Nikana, uh, they just remove the stance mod. They just, they just, boom, take it off. Because they prefer, uh, just the melee, how, how the melee feels, uh, when you're not using that specific stance mod. Because then you're just doing big sweeping slashes uh, on everything. And uh, I like a lot of people are just on the like just please do something about about Wise Razor. Make it make it better. Um so so that's sorta what drags this weapon down. Uh, it's just that it has a stance that people really despise and just don't think it's, it's enjoyable to play with, unfortunately. So, it's, it's, there's nothing really super special about this weapon. It's, it's, it doesn't have any cool gimmick or anything like that. It just has very, very solid stats. Um, it's got very good base damage. It's got a very good sort of damage distribution uh, weighted towards slash. Um, but it, it feels clunky to use because it has a bad stance mod. For general use and just going through the star chart and stuff, it's one of the uh, better tenet weapons because it doesn't require a whole lot of build around. It's just going to be good by itself. Um, but nothing spectacular. There's just nothing spectacular or, or like earth shattering about it. So all in all, uh, this weapon goes in the B tier. It goes in the B tier. Uh, slightly above average as far as tenant weapons goes, uh, but not near the top. And and that's the entire run through. That is the the entire breakdown of of all of the all of the new tenant weapons. So. Um, if you have something you absolutely disagree with, please let me know in the comments if there's something I have overlooked or you think I should have rated differently. Uh, 
or just you know hey show your general appreciation just write a comment and be like hey i thought this was a cool video you, you're you're a cool guy that that's nice too i like those comments too <laughs> so so yeah uh, we'll be doing more of these in the future when opportunity arises to do some sort of like themed videos like this uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, hope you know what you're gonna go hunting for now as far as your your tenet weapons goes and I will see you again tomorrow for something completely different.